Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about oxidation state and we're going to be doing some practice problems. So I'm going to use a list of rules here that I slowly laid out in Introduction to Oxidation State. So if you haven't watched that video, go ahead and do that first. So we'll get right into doing some more practice problems. So here in this problem, we want to find the oxidation state of each element in CF4. How do we do that? Well, CF4 has two elements in it, carbon and fluorine. And you notice that rule one says that the oxidation state for an element is the same as the charge you would predict from the periodic table. And so I can't predict the charge of carbon from the periodic table, but I can predict the charge of fluorine from the periodic table. And the charge of fluorine on the periodic table would be negative one. And that means that the oxidation state, in this case, of fluorine is negative one. And we know from rule two down here, that when I add up the oxidation state of everything in that compound, it has to add up to zero, because that's a neutral compound, a neutral molecule. So, I have four fluorines, each at negative one. So four times negative one gives me a total of negative four for the total negative oxidation state in that compound. Which means carbon has to be positive, so it can add up to zero. How positive? It has to have a positive oxidation state of four, plus four. And there's just one carbon, and that means that the oxidation state on my carbon is plus 4. So those are my answers. Carbon has an oxidation state, in this case, of plus 4, and fluorine has an oxidation state, in this case, of minus 1. Let's go ahead and do another one. Now we have CrO42- minus, or chromate, and we want to find the oxidation state on it. Here, we have to keep in mind that if we're dealing with an ion, like chromate, that the total oxidation state has to add up to the charge of that ion. In this case, two minus. So when we figure out the oxidation state on oxygen and chromium, it has to add up to minus two. All right, so once again, we can predict the charge of oxygen from the periodic table. Can't predict the charge of chromium from the periodic table. So that tells us that our oxidation state of oxygen is minus two which is frankly how you start many of these oxidation state problems. And if we think about the whole box here, all of those different elements are going to add up to a total oxidation state of negative 2. Now, we have four oxygens, each at negative 2. That gives us a total negative oxidation state of minus 8. And then we need to think about what oxidation state does that give us for chromium. Well, the question you can ask yourself is what minus 8 gives me minus 2. And the answer to that is plus 6. And if you're not sure, you can kind of guess and check a few times to get that to work out. And what you're going to do here is realize that if I take a positive 6 and I subtract 8, it's going to give me back out my negative 2 up here. And so that's how I know chromium is plus 6. So that's my answer to this question. Chromium has an oxidation state of plus 6, and oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2. All right, in this case, I have NH3, or ammonia. Now, ammonia has two different elements in it, nitrogen and hydrogen, and actually, using the periodic table, I can predict the charge of either of them. So how do I decide which one I start with? Well, I need to look at my list of all my elements and what element wins in each case. And this is uh, summarized in Rule 3. And it says that fluorine always beats hydrogen, which always beats oxygen, which always beats everything else. And that means that if I have fluorine mixed with any other element, I'm always going to start with fluorine's oxidation state. If I have hydrogen mixed with anything besides fluorine, then hydrogen wins out. In this case, I have hydrogen, and nitrogen's down here under everything else. So that means I'm going to start with my oxidation state of hydrogen. Hydrogen has a charge of plus 1 from its position on the periodic table, and that tells me that its oxidation state in this compound is plus 1. And again, I need the whole thing to add up to zero, because ammonia is neutral. It's a molecule, not an ion. And I have three things, each at plus one. And so that means that hydrogen contributes a total of plus three to the oxidation state. Then I have just one nitrogen, and I need it to add up to zero. So that means this must be minus three. And that's the answer to my problem. Nitrogen, in this case, has an oxidation state of minus three. And hydrogen, in this case, has an oxidation state of plus 1. Alright, 
So, now we have the case where we're dealing with sulfur and oxygen. Again, both of these elements, you could predict the charge based on their position on the periodic table, so you have to go to our list that tells me which one to use. And I use fluorine if I have it first, I use hydrogen next, then oxygen, then everything else. And so sulfur in this case is under everything else, and oxygen comes higher than it on the list, so I start out by assigning the oxidation state of oxygen, and it's minus 2, as always. And I need the total oxidation state here to add up to 0. And I have two things, each at negative 2. That means that I have a total of negative 4 oxidation state for my oxygen. And that means that for my sulfur, I need plus 4. So hopefully you're starting to get the hang of how we calculate these oxidation states. At first it looks kind of complicated. You do a few practice problems and it starts to be pretty straightforward. So sulfur has an oxidation state, in this case, of plus 4. And oxygen has an oxidation state, in this case, of minus 2. All right. Now, one last problem, which includes a ton of different examples. What's the oxidation state in each element for fluorine? That's F2. For H2, silver, copper, nitrogen 2, Cl2, or zinc? And the answer for all of them is the same. The oxidation state for every single one of those is 0. And the reason that is, is because rule 5 says if there's only one element in our compound, the oxidation state is 0. So here we have seven different compounds, but all of them only contain one element type. And so if you have a compound that's just all made up of the same element, the oxidation state is 0. So we just get a big fat 0 for all of these. And that's the case whenever you have an element by itself because of rule number 5. If you still have questions, please ask them below. Also subscribe to my channel to get updates about future chemistry videos.